Welcome back, everybody. I'm going to defer to the internet on this one because my chicken scratch unit circles are getting a little out of hand, and this one's set up really nicely for us. I want to show you something here. These five points in the first quadrant and that are quadrantal in the to the first quadrant are our fantastic five. Remember, they correspond to our 30-degree angle, our 45-degree angle, our 60-degree angle, our 90-degree angle, and then back to our zero-degree angle. Okay, and those were the points that we established in the last lesson. Now, look really closely because this is it's such a great uh, demonstration. If you recall from your algebra that the symmetric property of circles, look at how this point reflected across the y-axis gives me negative one half comma root three over two. This point reflected across the y-axis gives me negative root two over 2 comma root 2 over 2 etc etc these values down here are all the same the only thing that changes is the signs depending in which quadrant we're in depending on which quadrant we're in excuse me so you got quadrant 1 where x and y are always positive you've got quadrant 2 where x is negative and y is positive you've got quadrant 3 where x is negative and y is negative and you've got quadrant 4 where x is positive and y is negative now think about the impact that that has on your trig values. If x and y are always positive, then your sine, which is y, is positive, your cos, which is x, is positive, and your tangent, which is y over x, is always positive. Over here in the second quadrant, x is negative, so cosine is negative, y is positive, so sine is positive, and tangent, which is y over x, is negative because it's a positive divided by a negative. Down here in the third quadrant, we've got both x and y are negative, which means that sine is negative and cosine is negative, but tangent is positive because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Over here in the fourth quadrant, x is positive and y is positive, or excuse me, and y is negative, so I know that cosine, which is x, is positive, sine, which is y, is negative, and tangent, again, is negative. Now I'm just saying sine, cos, and tan. Remember cosecant, secant, and cotangent are all just reciprocals of the sine, the cos, and the tan respectively. Also notice how these angles, it's a nice job here isn't it, how we used degrees or the person used degrees on the inside and radians on the outside. That's cool, huh? I want to want to briefly talk about that for a sec. Why is this angle 5 pi 6? Well, it's 5 pi 6, and this is pi 6, excuse me, it's 5 pi 6 because this is pi 6. Remember, if this angle here is pi 6, then this angle here must be pi 6 as well. And if I subtract pi 6 from pi, I get 5 pi 6. Same thing here. Let's do why is this 7 pi 4? Well, there's two ways to go about this. I can either I acknowledge that this has to be a 45 degree angle and if I subtract 45 degrees from 2 pi if I subtract pi force from 2 pi I get 7 pi force or if I subtract 45 degrees from 360 degrees I get 315 degrees now you might be thinking to yourself well Ripley might I also have a coterminal angle of negative pi force or negative 45 degrees and the answer to that would be a resounding absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click back over to my tablet and we're going to have a little fun over here. Let's see what we've got. This could be a surprise. I'm going to flip this over. So let's figure out what we just learned. We learned that we've got those wonderful points and I'm going to flip back and forth. Well, let's go with blue. All right, I've got, I'm going to just throw a lousy old unit circle on here, so x squared, I know you're growing tired of this, but that's okay, equals 1. And then I know that in quadrant 1, I know that x and y are both positive, whoops, excuse me, I'm going to erase that, I'm going to make this a little more instructive. I know that x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0. So all of my trigs are greater than zero in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, I know that x is less than zero and y is greater than zero, which means that sine of theta and cosecant of theta are both greater than zero and everything else is negative. 
over here in quadrant did I write a quadrant one? I'm sorry guys, that's quadrant two. I know down here in quadrant three, I know that both x is less than zero and y is less than zero, which means that sine and cos cosecant and secant are both less than zero, but more importantly, tangent of theta and cotan of theta are both greater than zero. And last but not least, whoops, excuse me, over here in quadrant four, over here in quadrant four, I know that x is greater than zero and y is less than zero, which means that cosine of theta and secant of theta are both greater than zero. Now, there's a mnemonic that we can deal with here, and it works like this. It is, I'm going to change, we'll turn it into a red, just to say, it is all students take calculus. Notice, all of my trigs in the first quadrant are positive. Sine, S, S, students, is positive, and the reciprocal of sine, which is cosecant. Tangent, T, and T for take, and its reciprocal, cotan, are positive in the third quadrant, and calculus and cosine. So when you end up in these quadrants, all that you have to do is figure out what angle you're dealing with, and then what sign you're dealing with, and everything works out really, really nicely, which is what we're just about to do right now. Let's go ahead and change back to a black pen. Okay, so we're going to do some funky angles here, all right? Let's play with this for a sec. I want to figure out what the sign of, what was that, 7 pi force was? Okay, let's figure out on the unit circle what quadrant I end up in, all right? So let's see. This quadrant is from 0 to pi halves, the first quadrant. The second quadrant is from pi halves to pi. The third quadrant is from pi to 3 pi halves. And the fourth quadrant is from 3 pi halves back to 2 pi. So if I look at 7 pi fourths, let's think about that. Isn't that exactly the same thing as the sine of, let's see, 7 pi fourths, 4 goes into 7 pi exactly one time. So it's pi plus 3 pi fourths. So that ends up getting me that ends up getting me right there on the unit circle. So 7 pi fours, there's my angle, and there we go. That's theta equals 7 pi fours. How cool is that? I notice, though, I want you to make sure that you understand. I should have written that over here. Let's go theta equals 7 pi fours. Now, we know from that last little demonstration that this point corresponds to root 2 over 2 comma negative root 2 over 2. And hopefully you recall that on the unit circle the sign is the y value. So I know that this is equal to negative root 2 over 2. Now another way of thinking about this is to think of, okay, sine of, of pi plus 3 fourths is actually exactly the same thing as sine of negative pi fourths. We refer to those angles as being coterminal. So I'm going to change I'm going to change my color here. Oops. I'm going to change my color, not to blue, that'd be silly, to orange. I'm going to erase this little bit right here. And remember that an angle that opens clockwise is negative. So I could say that theta equals negative pi fourths. All right? Now, we got to be careful here because I've named two things theta, which clearly aren't equal. The number 7 pi fourths and negative pi fourths are not the same number. So I might either want to put a, maybe a prime on there, but that's getting pretty fancy. Another way to just avoid that is to simply say alpha, like that. Okay? Now, they end at exactly the same point which implies if they end at the same point, they got the same y value, and that's what sine is, so I have negative root 2 over 2.